Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurul Ain Farhanah binti Adnan. Hi, my name is Darusha Hadira bin Abdul Halim Shah. My name is Nafakira Elisha binti Muhammad Shahini. My name is Liana binti Masuhen. My name is Nafaran Daya binti Roslan. I want to share a little bit about the background of the company Focus Point Holding Berhad. Focus Point Holding Berhad is a company based on uh, engaged in the operation of eye care product, uh, training of eyewear and eye care products. The operating segment of the group are optical related products, franchise management, food and beverage and others. This company generates the majority of the revenue from the optical related product segment which includes the retailing of optical related products. This company has 74 uh, franchise professional eye care outlets located in Malaysia and this company founded in 1991 and is based in Kuala Lumpur. Next, I represent about the management approach of this company. The management approach requires identification of operating segment on the basis of internal reports that are regularly reviewed by the entity's chief operating decision maker in order to allocate resources to the segment and assess the performance. There are two factors to be considered in having a segment reporting. Firstly, the factor is uh, the type of product or services. This factor refers to the type of product or services such as spectacles, contact lenses, and eye laser services. For example, this company is selling a variety of products related to eye care and providing eye services. Entity A of Focus Point should report the operating segment based on the product lines and Entity B of uh, Focus Point should report operating segment based on the services provided. The second factor is the type of customer for the product and services. This factor refers to the type of class of customer for the product and services. For example, type of customer based on income. Income segmentation is the categorization of customer based on their income. The customer are divided into three groups of income. Firstly, high income groups, medium income group, and low income group. For example, focus point companies sell the sunglasses in a range of prices starting from 150 ringgit to 1500 ringgit so that the customer are from the low income goods can buy their sunglasses in affordable prices such as 150 ringgit to 250 ringgit while the high income goods afford to buy the sunglasses at prices at uh, 1000 ringgit and above. The type of segment of focus by holding the height is a business segment. What is business segment? Business segment is a distinguishable component of an entity that is engaged in providing an individual product or service or a group of related products or services that are subject to risk and return and that are different from those of other business segments. As for this company, which is Focus Point Holding Berhad, is its business segment comprised of optical and related product segment, franchise management segment, food and beverage segment, and other operating segments such as investment holding, laser eye surgery treatment, retailing of hearing solution, and related accessories. Next, do you know what is CODM? CODM is the chief of decision making that is a function, not necessarily a person, that is responsible to assess a performance of various segments and allocate resources to the segment. As for focus point holding berhad, the CODM would be the president or the CEO. The president is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of group business, implementation of port policies and making operational decisions. He is assist in managing of the group business by the management and it also should ensure the supply of timely, accurate and clear information relating to business and financial to the board of directors.
there are four reportable segments which is retelling of hearing solutions, laser eye surgery, treatment activities, property and optical. The non-reportable segments have three which is franchise management, food and beverages and others. Process to identify reportable and non-reportable segments. First, in order to identify reportable segments, we have to identify the operating segments where it is a component of an entity that engages in revenue earning business activities for which the financial information is available. Once the operating segments has been identified, we are required to disclose the information about segment separately if it meets any of the following quantitative threshold. First, its reported revenue, including both sales to internal and external customers, are more or equal to 10% of combined revenue of all operating segments. Second, the absolute amount of its reported profit or loss is equal or more to 10% of the combined reported profit and the combined reported loss of all operating segments, whichever is greater in absolute amount. Next, its asset or equal or more to 10% of the combined assets of all operating segments. In focus point holdings per hut, only four of the segments mentioned earlier satisfies the 10% quantitative thresholds, which will be then designated to be a reportable segment. However, for the segments which do not meet any of the requirements are classified as non-reportable segments and is to be combined and disclosed under other segments. If the total external revenue reported by operating segments constitutes less than 75% of the entity's revenue, additional operating segments should be identified as reportable segments even if they do not meet the criteria of 10% quantitative threshold until at least 75% of the entity's revenue is included in reportable segments. As what we know, there are three ways to do the 10% threshold test, which is first, on revenue, second on profit or loss, and lastly is on assets. For this company, we choose to do the 10% test on revenue. As we can see, there are seven segments in this company, which are optical, franchise management, food and beverage, laser eye surgery, treatment activities, retaining of healing solution, property, and others. The first step that we must to do is to find the total revenue for each segment. What is total revenue? Total revenue consists of external and internal revenue. Therefore, to find the total revenue for each segment, we have to sum up between external revenue and inter-segment revenue. Next step, we use 10% test. Total revenue for each segment will be divided by the combined revenue of all operating segments. We can see the amount of the combined revenue of all operating segments is 299 million 482,000. We will get percentage for each segment. Operating segment that equal to or more than 10% will be the reportable segments. To comply with the requirements to get at least 4 reportable segments and at least 1 non-reportable segment according to the question, there are 3 new reportable segments, which are laser eye treatment activities, retelling of hearing solutions, and properties. These 3 segments meet the criteria of 10% threshold test as it is more than 10%. While the other three non-reportable segments, which are franchise management, food and beverage, and others will be disclosed to other segments as it fails to meet the 10% threshold test. Lastly, we use 75% threshold test. Total external revenue for reportable segment will be divided by total external revenue of the company. So, for this company, we get 92.07%, which is more than 75%. Therefore, it's compared with the 75% threshold test. Here, the new segment report for the company has at 31st December 2020. As we can see, there are four reportable segments, which are optical, laser eye surgery treatment activities, retelling of hearing solution, and property. While the other three segments, which are franchise management, food and beverage, and others, will be disclosed in other segments because the three segment is non-reportable segments. For the conclusion, now we look at the advantages and disadvantages of the segment reporting. 
The first advantage is separating profitable segment. As Focus Point Holding Berhad, they operate in many type of different segment, so it can reveal which areas are profitable and not. So, if it be done properly, it can keep manager from hiding unprofitable ventures. Next is improved contact. Segment reporting allows the stakeholders to get the better sense of the fluctuations that may affect overall numbers. It is designed to help the investor understand the business and the potential cash flow. The disadvantage is data manipulation. Some of the manager will manipulate the data in the report so that the user of the report such as shareholders will get the false information about the performance of the company. Next is impressions on the present. Segment reporting might create the short term segment. For the example, focus point holding Berhad might create a short term segment. It can cause a bad effect to the financial statement, although it can give significance but it's only for the short term. It is when this short term segment that affect the overall performance of the company. So it might be a cause bad effect to the financial statement of the company. Operation Interim Report. The Interim Financial Report is unaudited and has been prepared in accordance with MFRS 134 Interim Financial Reporting issued by the MASB. And Appendix 9B of the ACE Market Listing Requirements of Bursa Malaysia Securities per High. The Interim Financial Report should be read in conjunction with the audited financial statements of the group for the financial year ended 31st December 2019. The accounting policies and methods of competition adopted by the group in this interim financial report are consistent with those adopted in the financial statements for the financial year ended 31st December 2019 except for the adoption of the following standards applicable to the group's financial year beginning 1st January 2019 <coughs> The group is in the process of assessing the impact of implementing these standards since the effect will only be observable for future financial years. The initial application of the accounting standards, amendments and the interpretation that are effective from 1st January 2019 do not have any major financial impacts to the current and prior financial year of the company. The accounting policies in its interim finance statements are applied same as in its annual finance statement. They made on a year-to-date basis. As said, for accounting policies changes made after the date of the most recent annual finance statement, they are to be reflected in the next annual finance statement. Here are two of accounting policies for the company focus point holding Berhad. First, inventories. Second, derivative financial instrument. First is inventories. Inventories that are recognized in interim report are the same as those that the focus point holding Berhad would follow in preparing annual financial statement. Inventories are stated at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Cost is determined using the following method. First, cost of optical and hearing aids are determined using the weighted average cost method, while cost of food and beverage and operation consumable are determined using the first in, first out method. Next, the cost of inventories comprise all costs of purchase plus the cost of bringing the inventories to their present location and conditions. Net realizable value is the estimated selling price in the ordinary cost of business less with the estimated cost of completion and the estimated cost necessary to make the sale. The second accounting policy is derivative financial instrument. Derivative financial instruments are recognized in each interim period at fair value on the day a derivative contract is entered into and subsequently remeasured at their fair value. And gain or loss arising from changes in the fair value of these contracts are recognized in profit or loss. Next, I will present about the interim report prepared by Focus Point Hordin Berhad. Interim report is publicly held and it typically involves the insurance of four quarterly financial statement ended 31st December 2020. These interim reports are covering a period of less than one year. Interim reports are used to convey the performance of focus point work 
before the end of the normal Korea financial reporting cycle. Unlike annual statement, interim report uh, do not have to be audited. Interim statement increase communication between the company and the public and provide investors with the up-to-date information between annual reporting periods. A quarterly report is a summary or collection of unaudited financial statements such as balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement issued by Focus Point Holding Berhad every quarter. In addition to reporting quarterly figures, the statement also provide year to date and comparative 2019 results. Now, let us look at the period of the current and comparative that prepared by the statement of the company for the first quarter until the fourth quarter. Firstly, now we look at the statement of financial position. So, at the fourth quarter, as we can see here, it started from the 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020 for the current period. And the comparative period is at the 2019. Now, we look at the statement of profit and loss. Look at the fourth quarter. As we can see here that it started from the 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020 as the 3 months. But we must take a look at the cumulative period from the 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020 which is 12 months. That is the cumulative for the current period of 2020. And we compare with the comparative year which is 2019 next is statement of cash flow now we look at the fourth quarter for the current period is from the 1st january 2020 until the 31st december 2020 that means it's 12 months that is we must take the cumulative period then the comparative is on the 2019 now, let us look at the statement of change in equity. Look at the fourth quarter. For the current period is from the 1st January 2020 until the 31st December 2020, which is 12, 12 months the cumulative period. And the comparative year is at the year 2019. Thank you. These are the two adjustments. I have prepared two extra statements of financial position, which is before adjustment and after adjustment. For the first adjustment that is related to opening inventory that overstate by 15 million ringgit will affect the profit for the period which is increased from 10 million ringgit 10 million 637,000 ringgit to 19 million 174,000 ringgit. The adjusted profit will be included to compute the new retained earning. The new retained earning which is 21 million 747,000 we get from the um, the opening balance of retained earnings which is 21,973,000 plus the adjusted profit minus the 15,000 15 million ringgit that overstate of opening inventory minus 4.4 dividend paid for the closing inventory adjustment we state that the net realizable value 38,525,000 that we know it the amount is lower the amount is lower than the closing inventory before adjustment so we have to use the amount to be, to be included in the statement of financial position as closing inventory last uh, the adjustment for company uh, adjustment for customer who owe 40,000 ringgit that has declared bankrupt and the company cannot collect the amount due so we know that it related to trade and other risk good and it, we call it as a bad debt so we have to deduct we have to deduct the bad debt of 43,000 ringgit from the trade and other receivable for the new trade and other receivable. So lastly, we get the the balance sheet amount of 191,244,000 ringgit.